They're the largest, most complex warships that have ever been built in, uh, in the United Kingdom. We can get the, the aircraft down the hangar and, and, and vice versa within 60 seconds. If needs be, we can launch four strike aircraft in two minutes, which is pretty impressive. I'm here at the Port of Rosyth in Scotland, temporary home to HMS Prince of Wales, the second of the two aircraft carriers commissioned for the Royal Navy. Not quite finished yet, bit of a building site, work in progress. But we've been invited on board today to find out how Britain's biggest ever warships are put together. Britain's new carriers the biggest ships the Royal Navy has ever had. They deliver power in more ways than one. What they're going to provide is real influence, uh, political choice to our politicians. The ships themselves, hugely impressive. Four and a half acres of a flight deck, which we can put anywhere in the world, uh, 500 miles a day. We can fly uh, 36 jets, four helicopters. So hugely impressive uh, ships. HMS Prince of Wales is the second of the two aircraft carriers, and we're about two years behind HMS Queen Elizabeth. Uh, we benefit from all the lessons uh, that, that have come out from building HMS Queen Elizabeth. And with that in mind, what is the advantage and benefit of having two carriers? So two carriers means that we can provide continuous availability of, of, of a carrier to, to the politicians, so that they've always got that political choice and decide how they use us. By having the two carriers, we've got one continuously available at, high, at very high readiness uh, for the politicians, always. And the second one is that they're at high readiness and which we can use to do training and we can also use to do maintenance. Just talk to me a little bit about the, the process and the programme, where we are with its construction at the moment, how long there is to go and what happens when. In terms of the build programme, the ship is structurally complete, as you can see. So inside the ship, what we're doing now is we're fitting all the pipework, all the cables, all the cabinets that we need uh, to, to, to get in. Once we've done all that, then we will float the ship out of the dock early next year. But we've learned a lot of lessons from Queen Elizabeth, so we can shorten the, the time it's going to take to make that all work, because we now have a proven design from HMS Queen Elizabeth. And the success of her sea trials mean that we can build this ship with absolute confidence knowing it's going to work. Ultimately, the ship will have a crew of around 700. When I went aboard, there were the ship builders and around 200 key naval personnel. It's quite a privilege, I guess, to be on board and part of the company, you know, so early in the process. You know, it's mm -hmm. quite, you're getting a unique look around, really, aren't you? I'm the first flight deck PO on HMS Prince of Wales, so yeah, um, we're getting the perks of maybe picking our bunk spaces early, getting their routes closest to the naffy, to the dining hall all laid off, squared away. All the important things, yes. you want to know where you're yes, sleeping, yes, yes. where the food is, and you can exactly. get ahead of the game when everyone else comes to work, to the office, yeah. yeah. Are you getting your bearings? Are you letting your way around? It's taken its time. I've spent 12 years on HMS Ocean before this. And obviously, I knew that inside and out. But coming on to a uh, newer ship of this scale is uh, taking its time. There is times when you're lost walking between decks and trying to get your bearings, but it's all part and parcel. You've, mm. got to, you've got to ease your way into it. You've oh, got to definitely. learn where things are and learn where things go and yeah. get to know it and love not, it, I guess. Not just that, but if you look at, obviously, the deck, the sheer size of the deck where it's my place of work, just looking down at the ring bolts, there's just short of 4,000 ring bolts on the flight deck. So, obviously, they need to be maintained, hoovered out for flying operations. Um, there's a lot of real estate to maintain. So, yeah, there's still a lot more to go on the flight deck, but we're getting there. We've got the uh, tented areas, that's where the TMS, the thermal magnetic spray, is getting laid to the flight deck. Um, thermal magnetic spray is obviously a course of uh, paint that lays down that we can withstand the temperatures from the new F-35 uh, Bravo aircraft. If you imagine they come in alongside vertical landing, a lot of temperature coming from the exhaust nozzles, so certain areas of the deck need to be treated for the, to withstand them high temperatures. Okay, we won't keep you from it anymore. Yeah. Get back to <laughs> if, if needs be, we can launch four strike aircraft in two minutes, which is pretty impressive. Which is really impressive. Pretty impressive, yeah. The hangar has always been and will always be the heart of an aircraft carrier. It's, it's 4,823 metres squared of, of mass that, or land that we have to use for aviation and for engineering. So uh, if you look back aft, 
Uh, we have the, the aft lift, the aft rad point, and then we've got a lot of workshops. So we've got a battery bay, we've got a tyre bay, we've got a special engine bay, uh, primarily for the F35 engines. We can fit up to 23 F35 Bravos in the hangar, um, and they'll be able to be maintained. There'll be enough space for people to get in and around them to fuel up, to, to do the bits and bobs that they need to do. The size uh, and the ability of these ships if that doesn't impress you, I really don't know what will. OK, John, tell me about the area that we're coming into now and what it's used for. So the area we're now in is the, uh, the Flight Deck Hangar Operating Centre, Operations Centre. Um, this is essentially the, the, the primary point of um, control for the aircraft coming from the hangar up to the flight deck and the, the, the aircraft going from the, hang the, the flight deck down to the hangar. That's all done via the, the two aircraft lifts or the side elevators. We can get the, the aircraft down the hangar and, and, and vice versa within 60 seconds, which again is, is incredibly, incredibly quick and all that is controlled through here. I would say the, the, the primary point of uh, information in this, in this room will be just, just against that, uh, that bulkhead there. There'll be a large screen on there which will, which will give us the, the flying programme, um, which will give us the requirements, what the, how many aircraft we need, in, in what role. So we're on, we're on two deck, we're just below the flight deck. Tell me what happens here. Well, this is the forward weapons preparation area. They're stored down in deep magazines within the ship on levels eight and nine. Now to get them from, from those magazines to this area, we've got the highly mechanized weapons handling system. We will select what we need from the computer system in the control office up here, and the machines will go pick the pallet up deliver it to the lift in the magazine, which will then bring them up here on so the up, pallet. up this lift here? Up this lift here, yep. deliver them to here. The Prince of Wales has over a quarter of a million kilometres of cable across 16 decks. There'll be space for 1,600 personnel overall. We looked at some of the places they work, but also where they'll rest. Come on through, this is a cabin for uh, six, possibly eight, if necessary, crew members, and I'm told, reliably informed, feels a little bit confined, but actually it's very spacious comparatively with other ships on board. Um, two levels in terms of beds. On other ships there's three, so where there wouldn't be any headroom, this one you can sit up in bed, there's headroom. A TV will go on that screen there. A bit of locker space, crew can make it their own with some posters, some memories of home. Compact, but nice, all mod cons. And while I was looking around, some people were trying out for my job. Hello, my name's leading engineer Tom Handley, and today I'm in the operations room, commonly referred to as the ops room. So where I'm stood now, this is the command horseshoe, so where all the command of the ship will be sat during a war fighting situation. So behind me here is what will be referred to as the knowledge wall. Here there'll be located three 42-inch flat screen TVs where all the sensor information is fed into to give the command team here a, a full sight of what is happening around the ship and within the ship's task force. So it's a common misconception that the, the captain is sat on the bridge uh, looking through binoculars out to sea, but uh, in a war fighting situation, he would be sat at this desk with all of his information displayed to him here. So there we have a brief description of the ops room here on board HMS Prince of Wales. Thank you, Tom. I'm sure there are other things you need to be getting on with. Best leave the last word to the captain. I'm in awe every day when I come on the ship and look at the size of it. Um, it's been really exciting to watch Queen Elizabeth and watch the, the development of Queen Elizabeth. So we've been alongside her, watching her develop from an inbuilt state, ready to go to sea and watching the crew build up and get ready to go to sea. And that's the journey that we're now on.